book of Revelation, the fifth chapter, and the ninth verse. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. John was a prisoner on the isle that is called Patmos. There, for the witness of Christ, toiling, no doubt, in the dreadful lead mines into which the prisoners of that age were sent. Undoubtedly, he was now an old man. His company had gone before him. He had outlived all his contemporaries, we suppose, in the apostolic band. And if he had thought that perhaps because of what Christ said to him and Peter on one occasion, if I will that he tarry, that is John, until I come, what is that to thee? If he had thought that perhaps that Christ might come again while he was yet alive, no doubt that uh, hope had faded. The gospel which he preached had made very little visible effect upon that uh, cruel pagan world and civilization. But just as at the end of a clouded winter day, sometimes the sun will paint with glory the sky and the earth, ere it disappears. So here at the sunset of his life, St. John is granted a glorious vision a window is opened for him in heaven, and he beholds the splendor of the kingdom of God and the triumph of that Christ upon whose breast he leaned at the supper. Let us see now, if we can, what he saw. He had had the preliminary vision when he saw Jesus standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, holding the seven stars in his right hand. But now he has a supplementary vision and beholds Christ, the King of time and eternity, going into action. He sees rising out of this sea of glass, a great throne, which is girt about with a rainbow like an emerald. And out of the throne proceed voices and thunders and lightnings. The throne is surrounded by the four living creatures and the four and twenty elders with crowns of gold upon their heads. And as he looks and sees the majesty of God upon the throne, he sees that he holds in his right hand a book sealed with seven seals within and without. And a great angel stood before the throne and flung out the challenge, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And John waited with great hope and expectation to see someone come forward and break the seals of that book, for he was sure that the book contained the unfolding purposes of God. But to his disappointment, no one answered that challenge. 
not the four living creatures or the four and twenty elders, none of the great angels, Michael or Uriel or Raphael or Gabriel, the angel of song. None of them volunteered to attempt even to look upon the book. And John wept, not because his curiosity was disappointed, but because he felt that the great secrets of the book would never be known. But one of the elders said to him, Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And John looked again at the throne, and what he saw was not a lion or a root, but a lamb standing as he had been slain. And the lamb came forward and took the book out of the hand of him that sat upon the throne. And as he did so, the whole creation joined in a great song of ascription and thanksgiving. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us unto God by thy blood. Now watch as he opens and looses the seals of that book. He breaks the first seal, and behold a white horse, and his rider with bow, and crown upon his head, the symbol of victory. He breaks the second seal, and behold a red horse and his rider with a great sword in his hand to take peace from the earth. He opens the third seal, and behold a black horse and his rider with balances in his hand, the sign of famine when food has to be measured. He opened the fifth seal, the fourth seal, and lo, a pale horse, the pallor of death, and death astride him, and hell following in his train. He opened the fifth seal, and the souls of them that had been slain for the witness of Christ, all the martyrs, cried from beneath the altar, How long, O God, wilt thou not avenge thy saints? He opened the sixth seal, and behold, an earthquake, and the sun became a sackcloth, and the moon is blood, and the stars fell from heaven upon the earth, and wicked and impenitent men called upon the rocks and the mountains to fall upon them and hide them from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Then he opened the seventh seal, and there was silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. No horses of war came galloping forth. The thunders were muted. No rolling anthems of praise, but deep silence, as if the waves of time had ceased to beat upon the shores of time. At the end of that period of silence, 
the seven angels appeared and began to sound upon their trumpets one after the other and as they did so convulsions in the heavens and upon the earth great signs and wonders and all the infernal powers and spirits came up out of their dark dens to make war upon the church and upon Christ and then through the tumult was heard the sounding of the seventh angel and great voices were heard in heaven crying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever that was what in was in the book the history of mankind the destiny of the world and the church and the ultimate triumph of the kingdom of God the only one who could open the book and reveal its secrets was the lamb standing as he had been slain no great angel no great heavenly power could even look upon the book still less open it but Christ is the interpreter and the expression of the unfolding purposes of God and with that in mind let us think first how Christ crucified is the interpreter of the book of Revelation the Bible and then how he is the interpreter of the book of history and finally the interpreter of the book of your life and my life in the first place then Christ and Christ crucified is the interpreter of the Bible what is the Bible well as its name signifies Bible Biblia a number of books 66 of them written by 30 and more authors through a millennium and a half of time some of these authors learned men like Moses and Ezra and Paul others of them herdmen and fishermen and peasants and in these books every form of human and literary composition historical narrative and apostrophe and poetry and proverb and apocalypse and personal letters but that doesn't tell you much about the Bible does it if that's all it is you have no clue to its purpose or its meaning and to put together in the same volume the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation the book of Judges and the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians the great chapter on love the book of Kings and the gospel of St. Luke to do that would seem to be an offense against both common sense and literary unity but just as the Lamb of God was the light of the holy city so he is the light of the Bible and when you read the Bible by the light of the Lamb crucified there you begin to see its 
ongoing purpose and its beautiful and star-like unity like the stars of heaven. And you can say in the words of the great hymn, my soul rejoices to pursue the steps of him I love till glory breaks upon my view in brighter worlds above. Without the light of Christ, the Bible is a medley. It's like a great cathedral in the gloom and shadows of the night, just a dark, inchoate mass. But with the light of Christ read that way, it is like the great cathedral when the Orient sun discovers its splendors and its beauties, its noble gateway, its lofty nave, its apse and its choir and its chapels of devotion and its windows flaming with the light in the faces of the goodly fellowship of the prophets and the glorious company of the apostles and the noble army of the martyrs. Again, Christ has the key to the book of history. He is the alone interpreter of history. What a book that is. You can hardly dare to look upon it, still less interpret it. You can record a few facts here and there, but the meaning of the facts you cannot tell. And only occasionally can you seem to see good coming out of evil. What a tangle, what a confusion, what an uproar and tumult. The history of this world is the convulsions and eruptions of evil. Michael and the devil always fighting over the body of humanity as they disputed over the body of Moses. And war following war, the war that is now raging to be the war that will end all war and then the next is always worse than the last. What a book it is. Who can break its seals? Certainly the scientists do not have the key. Science builds up with one hand and reaches up and tears down with the other. Education does not have the key. Admittedly, we have put a college on every high hill in this country and a schoolhouse under every green tree. And yet here we are, the most criminal nation on the face of the earth. Statesmanship does not have the key. In his speech before the Congress last week, several times when he came to speak of what might happen in connection with grave world problems, Mr. Churchill confessed that neither he nor anyone else was wise enough to make a prediction. No, no human mind, no human experience can give us the meaning of this book of time and history. Only Christ, who is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, can tell us that. And in the light of his truth, the history of the world is only a parenthesis between the first words of the Bible, in the beginning God, and the great cry of triumph, it is finished. I am Alpha and Omega, 
The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. One of the old paintings describing the flight of the Holy Family into Egypt shows them resting for the night by the Sphinx in front of the Great Pyramid. Joseph sleeps on the sand, but Mary and the child are resting there between the paws of the Sphinx as he gazes out with his stony, inscrutable look across the desert. Apparently, the idea of the artist must have been to suggest that only in Christ and Christ crucified is the riddle of the world solved. The seals of the book of mystery open. And finally, Christ alone is the interpreter of the book of our life, your life and mine. The world has its book of mystery, and so have you. There are pages upon which we would just as soon not look, blotted with our failures and our transgressions and our sins. There are other pages upon which we hardly dare to look because recorded there are physical sufferings or mental anguish. So much, too, that to our point of view seems needless suffering without uh, profit to our souls and then taken from our side from time to time, those whom we love and whose uh, fellowship and love nerved our arm for endeavor and cleared our mind and warmed our heart. O oh, seven sealed Book of mystery, who shall break thy seals? There's only one who can do that, and that is Christ. And he invites you to bring to him the sealed book of your life and its meaning. And he will tell you the meaning. He asks you to come to him with all your temptations with all your sorrows, with all your trials, and he will show you the meaning and the purpose of them. And we discover that we're not in the grip of iron fate or haphazard chance, but we are in the arms of infinite, unfaltering, faithful, wounded, suffering love. O cross that liftest up my head, I dare not seek to fly from thee. I lay in dust, life's glory dead, and from the grave there blossoms red life that shall endless be. Bring the book of your life to the Lamb standing as he had been slain. Let us pray. We stand in wonder, O God, before this 
sublime vision which thou didst grant unto the Apostle John. May we use that light and lamp when we read the Bible and remember that this is Christ's book. As he said, these are they that testify of me and Moses wrote of me and as the apostles said to him all the prophets bear witness and when we are troubled and perplexed about the state of the world about the overthrow the persecution the execration of the good by the evil, may we remember that Christ is the Lord of time and eternity, that thou hast given him the heathen for his inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for his possession. And when the book of our own life and experience may seem too difficult for us to understand or to look upon, then may we bring it unto him who will break its seals and tell us the meaning thereof and assure us, each one of us, of thy divine care and thy love and thy wondrous redemption in him who loved us and gave himself for us. We ask it in his name. Amen.